Radio. My name is Shirley Lawson. I'm an assistive technology and ASN teacher here at Call Scotland. I'm delighted to welcome Amber Elliott, a customer success executive at TextHelp and an expert, I believe, in Equatio uh, to deliver this webinar. Hi, Amber. Hi, Shirley. Thanks for that lovely introduction. Uh, not at all. Um, we've just had Maths Week Scotland um, last week, and there's been a flurry of numeracy activities being highlighted and shared, which has been great. But often learners with additional support needs can struggle to access math. So we're really looking forward to hearing how Equatio can perhaps help some of these learners. Um, Robert's here in the background uh, recording and keeping an eye on things. Thanks very much, Robert. Um, great Thanks. to see so many people logging in from all over Scotland and, and further afield. So the plan for today is the, the webinar will run for about 20 minutes um, and there will be opportunity to ask questions via the chat pane. So please do type them in as we go along and I'll, I'll coordinate a question and answer session at the end um, once Amber's finished with her, with her presentation. Um, so Robert, as I say, is recording it and you will be sent uh, the link to the, the archive webinar uh, by email and it will also sit on our website too so people can access it, access it at a later date. OK, so uh, I am just going to pass over to you, Amber. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Shirley. And hi, everyone. Thank you so much for jumping on today. So I am going to share my screen here. Perfect, and that. So I'm just going to reshare that with the same. I just realized I haven't clicked include computer sound. All right. So please can all see that OK and hear me all right? Great, so, yes. Perfect, perfect. So today, as Shirley mentioned, I am going to be talking about Equatio. So we're going to be talking more specifically about making maths accessible for all through the use of Equatio. So hi, I'm Amber. Shirley has kindly introduced me already, but I'm a customer success executive here at TextHelp. So I usually uh, look after customers once they have acquired the software and anything they need. That's my job to anything that needs sorted. I'm, I'm the woman for it. I have my email there, which is a.elliot at techself.com. If you have any questions at all, please do reach out. I also have my lovely colleague Andrew's email there. He, I'm just standing in for him today, actually. So he usually deals with all things Scotland. So that's why I've included his email. So got both of us there. So I'm just going to go through a few very quick introduction slides and then we're going to jump into a demo. So a little bit about TextHelp, uh, the company. So we are the largest specialist IT company in the world supporting inclusion in education. And we were launched in 1996 and we have over 200 uh, million plus regular users. And we're also used a lot. I'm sure a lot of you are hopefully familiar with Read and Write. We are in quite a few of the Scottish councils, so a few of you might be quite familiar with it, hopefully. And hopefully, if you haven't heard of Equatio, I'm going to show you a few things today. So again, just a very small introduction into the company as a whole. So we want to unlock everyone's full potential through the use of inclusive technology. And our vision is to help everyone understand and be understood. And we do this through the use of our tools such as Read and Write and Equatio. So just a statistic here for you. So 60% of individuals with dyslexia will also have difficulties with maths. So it's very important that we can find the support for those students. So a few learning needs in the classroom. There are many, many learning needs in the classroom. I have just highlighted a few that Equatio can really help um, with. So we've got dyslexia dyscalculia and dyspraxia. And if you're unfamiliar with any of those terms, um, discal dyscalculia is difficulty with coordinated movements and dyspraxia is difficulty understanding numbers. 
So why equation? So there is more than one way to solve maths problems and we all learn and think so differently. So student need, students really do need choices in how they develop their math skills. And with the right tools and support, they can understand and achieve more. So that is our aim with Equatio. So how do we actually make maths access, more accessible and, and support all students? So we want to take maths beyond the pen and paper and create accessible, engaging and a great learning experience in maths and science as well. So again, making maths accessible to every student. So it lets students visualize, digitize and understand maths with independence in a way that suits them best. And this is especially great for students who have additional support needs. So this is just a bit of a quick dive into what I will be covering today, I like the specific tools. So we, how do we support our students? So we do this by breaking down work into smaller chunks that can aid in recall and learning. So we do this through tools such as our predictions, which can support uh, vocab and development and recall, along with our legs, which are completely editable and they support structure and formation of ideas. And we also have multiple means of input, which is very important um, so students can choose how they actually want to express their maths. Again, following on from this, we have a lot of options to make maths visual and this we do this through the likes of digital manipulatives. And also we have um, lots of multiple means of input, like I said before, to make maths accessible everywhere. So. It can be spoken, handwritten or typed in. And we also have about 250 shapes already built in, which can really help the students to accurately draw the likes of angles independently without the use of human support. So a helping hand where it's needed. This is just a small slide and how uh, it actually I see that there's reading right there, but it's the same with Equatio, how it can be integrated into multiple platforms. So Equatio works across lots of different platforms, including Mac, Windows and Google, and it integrates seamlessly with learning management systems as well. So students can get support wherever they need it. So let's look at it in action then. That's enough of me blabbing on. I'll actually uh, get you in the demo now. So I'm just going to pop open another tab here. So I am going to be using, as I mentioned before, uh, we do have, it can be used across Windows and Google, but and Mac also. I am going to just be using Google Doc, a Google Doc today, just out of um, handiness, but yes, can be used across various platforms. So I'm going to open up. So I have my Equatio uh, toolbar open up here at the bottom and it's simply in my extension. So I've clicked on my Equatio toolbar and I'll just run you through it. So a uh, lovely blue toolbar here at the bottom and within this we have a few options. And these are our tools itself. So we have our equation editor, editor which I will be touching on today. Again, this is going to be a simple uh, run through, so I'm not going to go through everything because uh, I'm not uh, a mathematician, unfortunately. So the likes of the LaTeX editor and stuff, I'm, I'm not really going to touch on today, but we're going to get a really good idea of the basics of it anyway. So we've got our equation editor, LaTeX editor, our Desmos graphing calculator, our handwriting recognition, speech input, Equatio Mobile, uh, Equatio math, math, math Space, apologies, which I will be touching on today as well, Screenshot Reader and our STEM tools. So I'm going to start by um, capturing the maths. So with the Screenshot Reader, Equatio can read the maths and uh, read it in a very accessible way that actually does read the maths for the student. So what I mean by that is I'm going to click on my screenshot reader and I'm going to capture this maths here. Simplify 3 over 24. I'm hoping you were able to hear that there, but it said simplify 3 over 24. So it's actually read the maths at 3 over 24. So in familiar student speak, 
in uh, language and maths terms that students understand it has read it out. So this can capture maths anywhere, so it can capture maths on the web or in, as I said, uh, any document or anything like that. Uh, this we also have the uh, oh perfect read it clearly. We also have the option to copy the maths so that maths can be copied and pasted into anywhere that the student would like. And we can also edit that through the equation editor. So if I want to then answer this, I'm going to use the handwriting at uh, the handwriting input to answer that. So three over 24. Apologies, that's me from earlier. So I, I have a touchscreen laptop here, so I'm going to reach over here and and do this with my. I could do it with my mouse, actually. Oops, that was a. Three over. 24. And it actually recognised that too, which I'm. Um, <laughs> it's a testament to it, really. Equals for eight. And again, you can see there, as messy as that was, as I just done that with my mouse, but it has clear, very simply captured that maths. And it has given it to me here, which I can then go in and edit if I would like. And I'm just going to insert this maths here. So if I then scroll down in my document right underneath, I have the three over 24 equals one eighth. So that's a great uh, input method with handwriting recognition. We also have speech input as well. So find the square root of 144. So I'm going to dictate my answer through the speech input. I'm just going to clear that from my previous. And so I'm going to click on the start speech input. Square root of 144 equals 12. I'm going to stop that there. And as you can see, that has provided the actual square root symbol. So again, in um, language that students will understand and 144 equals 12. So having this multiple neat means of input, it really gives students um, flexible support where they need it and however they would like to express their maths, there is the option to with a quiz you. So I'm going to clear that. So within our equation editor, we have the use of legs. So say if I was given multiply 32 and 14, that can, if I was to do that digitally, it could be very awkward to line up everything. So um, having a supportive, like a scaffolding support can really, really help students. So what I mean by that is I'm going to go into my equation editor, my three dots, which is more, and I've clicked on legs and I have been searching this earlier, but we have lots and lots of layouts here to choose from, like lots, everything you could really need. But I'm simply going to search multiplication. And we've got an option for two digit or three digit. So I'm going to put in three digit and I will just input the numbers here. And I'm just using my arrow keys to kind of toggle between this. And I will, I won't do the working out today, but there is the option there obviously for your working out and all that. And it's going to be perfectly laid out, but I'm just going to go straight to the answer here. And I'll then insert that math. And as you can see here, and obviously if my work and it was there, it would be showing there. But as you can see, I have the maths multiplication laid out exactly how I need it to be laid out. And again, excellent for students with dyspraxia and, dys and um, dyslexia that will really benefit from the scaffolding support to help them express their maths. We also have 
lots of powerful predictions built in with the ratio. So again, within equation editor, I'm going to clear this and I'm going to start typing. So find the area of the shape. So I'm going to start typing area and we've got all the area options. So I'm going to do area of a circle and I'm actually going to toggle between. I can just very easily also toggle between the subscript and the superscript. So that's very, that's very good. It's not awkward to do. So very, very good to be toggling between those with so much ease. And I'm just going to insert that. So as you can see there, it has provided me with the actual area. So it hasn't given me the answer, but it has given me the formula, which can really, really help to lighten cognitive load on a student and remembering all these uh, formulas. So we've got the, I'm just going to uh, finish this. So we've got equals. So again, the powerful predictions, I can just type in equals. So I can type in EQ and we've got equals come up. So I don't have to look around for the symbol. I can just type anything I'd like in there and it will come up. So we've got nine and then again with the pi, I've just typed in that and it has come up there and centimeters. Could just type in CM and squared. So again, I am not look, looking around everywhere for the symbols or the correct two or anything like that. It's all just there for me. And I can then insert that maths. And that can then be read aloud, so it's fully accessible. I can read that again with the screenshot reader. So I'm aware that we're kind of running out of time here. So I'm just going to go very quickly into MathSpace. So MathSpace is a tool that's built in to uh, Quatio. It's a great tool to work freely in digital MathSpace with equations, shapes and freehand drawings. And I spoke earlier about our uh, built in shapes. So we've got within our smart shapes, we have a few smart shapes built in here. These shapes are fully editable. So I'm going to go into angle measure. And I'm going to create a lovely angle there. And as what I mean by editable is I can just go in here and do 120. And it's given me a 120 degree angle. I'm actually going to take away this label because I'm going to show you how I can then overlay a protractor and very easily measure this angle without the use of kind of awkward multiple pieces of equipment. And students with fine motor skill challenges can really benefit from something like this. So again, I'm going to go over and I can just overlay my protractor here. And again, I can measure that that angle is in fact 120 degrees. So it takes away the use of navigating multiple pieces of awkward equipment. I'm going to create a new page here. And I'm very going to very quickly going to show you the um, digital manipulatives that I was talking about earlier. Apologies, I'm not sure why that has, sorry, my computer has a lot going on with it today. But I'm going to go into shape and we have shapes and we have over 250 built in shapes in Equatio. So anything you could want, it is, it's, it's here. So we have lots and lots of choose from coins, anything like that. I'm going to just type in a 3D block or base blocks even. And this is going to give me some blocks here. And if I have, for example, have been asked to represent 23 with the use of the blocks, I can just do this by clicking on the infinite cloner. And I'm going to apply lock and clone. And I can then just pull these out, just like um, physical manipulatives, but they're never going to run out. That's the, that's the beauty of it. Sometimes in the classroom, there's the worry of all these um, manipulatives running out. So again, excellent for students to really visualize the maths that they're learning and to be able to express maths in whatever way they would like. So with the freehand drawing then, I'm just going to do 23. So that has, so that's 23 represented with the use of the base blocks, as I said, which really helps to visually bring maths to life without running out of physical manipulatives. 
So just very quickly, that's that's the most of my demo done. I'm just going to jump back very quickly into my slide here. And yes, that's just a kind of holding slide of me, but just uh, to sum it all up, uh, we know that the recall of formula drawing accurately and structuring works and um, structuring works are, are key challenges for many students. And we aim to remove these uh, barriers to learning with the use of Equatio. We also know how important uh, digital mani or manipulatives are to help learning. And we want to make maths visual and engaging so that students can explore abstract maths concepts in a way that suits them best. And that is about it in terms of the um, presentation today. I will stop sharing my screen here. Apologies. Thank you very much, Amber, for that. That's that no demo problem there. Um, I can imagine just to be asked to do that in 20 minutes is, <laughs> is a really hard task because there's each tool you could actually be spending oh, so yes. much time demonstrating there. So it was a really good uh, snapshot of what Equatio can do. A couple of questions in there yeah. and one of them I was going to touch on was about using Equatio in exam mode. Um, and Mr Brown is asking if it, if it can be used in SQA exams. Yes, so at the minute it can't, but it is something that it's active, we're actively kind of working on. So hopefully in the very near future it will be able to. At the very minute, unfortunately, it can't with SQA um, exams. Okay, and certainly with English exam board, they're they're on board with it. They, yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So when when it's in exam mode, you've got sort of limited functionality. Yes, it, so yeah. exactly. So within exam mode, it is only the screenshot reader, so it can it can read the math, and that is what it what the toolbar will be completely limited to. Right. Okay. Super. Um, questioning about the cost. Yes. So the cost, and oh. yeah, unfortunately, that's not really my department. <laughs> um. So anything about the cost, please do get in contact with Andrew or even myself. And I can pass you on to Andrew because he'll be able to price it. It is based, I think, I'm not exactly sure how they base the costing. I said, I'm not, it's not usually my department, but um, Andrew will be able to, or myself will be able to provide you a quote with that. It is based on, I think, the school's sizes and things like that. Yes, so I think there's economy yeah. of scale if you're going exactly. for a whole school rather than just individual exactly. pupil there. And uh, But absolutely fantastic. It works cross-platform, so yeah. it doesn't matter what device you've got in your school, you're able to access it. That's a, that's a huge thing there. Um, question we've got in here, um, somebody uh, had saying here, I noticed the brackets were not used when subbing into area formula, uh, will that be a problem with, say, ABC producing a three digit number? That is, that's just something I'll have to get back on. As I said, I'm not really um, overly mathsy, so I, mm. that is something that I will ask and I'll, I'll ask the right people who will, who will get back to that. So can I just repeat yeah. the question repeated just so I can take it down? Yet I I will uh, will keep the chat and I will email it to Perfect. you separately, Amber, and then um, we can uh, share contact details. Just if you maybe want to, uh, we'll put your contact slide up again so everybody has got your yeah. contact details and also uh, Andrews if people have got uh, questions about uh, the costing of it Perfect. there. Um, and just a, a question about uh, the terminology dyscalculia and dyspraxia. Um, so there, there's, well, you, I think your explanation, I can't actually remember which bit of that related to it. Um, so dyscalculia, we think of a, a, a having a numeracy difficulty, which can or can or sometimes associated with for learners that have dyslexia as well. Dyspraxia, you know, certainly thinking of dyspraxic learners who might have difficulty laying out maths problems, therefore to, for you to have the the, the layouts there, the the, the where you're slotting your figures and that can be really, really helpful for that. Yes. Um, if anyone else has got any questions, please do type them in the chat um, pane there. I, I really like the math space, especially for being able to do something like angles um, and yeah. overlaying the protractor on that. Once you've done the workings in the math space, do, yeah. do can you then, does that, could 
that be put into a Google document or where it, does that math space sit? Yeah, it can indeed. So you can save that within the math space itself or you can upload it into the likes of Google Classroom or you can email it directly to if I was a student, I could email it directly to my teacher or if I wanted okay. to make uh, make research as an educator, if I wanted to make resources, it's a great tool for that as well, because I can then create that and put it into, say, a Google Classroom or a Google, yeah, upload it into a Google Class. Good, good. I mean, I can see it being really useful for students themselves doing working, but also for, you know, like a maths teacher, uh, you know, doing examples on an interactive whiteboard where you've, you know, you've got these tools there and, you know, it's a real universal design for learning approach to have, you know, the text to speech, the speech to text, um, handwriting recognition, you know, all these tools that are there giving learners options uh, working to meeting their needs. Yeah, oh, absolutely. The math space is is brilliant and it can be so I can have grid lines on that, whatever the student prefers. It's fully kind of customizable so I can change it to color, things like that. I can visually I can make it look exactly how I want it as well which I think is important mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and even your handwriting recognition the three over 24 I thought oh it's not going to recognize it <laughs> <laughs> it definitely did so uh, oh, I you know, know. The, the, yeah. that was good so basically when you're clicking on the equatio icon yes. uh in at to, in the um to the to the right of the your URL bar that's opening up the toolbar at the bottom exactly it is indeed that's what that's doing and if it was if I was using it on Windows uh with uh, Windows version it's an app so I would search for it's it an, in yeah. my toolbar and I would open it up it looks it looks identical it's just slightly it's the different same, ways. Yeah. yeah yes um within the math space I the toolbar opens up automatically so it has the added a few added elements to it. So the shapes and the freehand drawings. So it will then just automatically open with once I open MathSpace, which can be very easily located at um, equatio.mathspace. Great, great. Well, listen, thank you so much for, for showing us the tool today. I'm sure people will be able to get the chance to go back and maybe explore it a little bit further. I know there's got some really good support videos on your website. Yes. Um, you know, absolutely everything. If you maybe just want to share your slide with your contact details, we'll finish up with that and people can get in touch if, uh, separately. Um, yep, as I said, please do get in touch and it, either myself or Andrew will get back to you. So that's my email at the top, and that is Andrew's there. And secondly, but yeah, please do get in contact. Any questions at all, more than happy to answer them or any queries. Great, and lo lots of nice thank yous coming in there. So that's that's absolutely super. And a big thank you from us at Call Scotland. Um, and we we will be back in touch. And we we're always a fan of the Text Help products. We've seen them working in schools really well. So uh, thank you very much, Amber. Thank you thank to Robert you. for for uh, supporting and being and doing the recording. And thank you to everyone that uh, joined in today. Thank See you, you all very later. Much, Thanks. Have a nice day. Bye for now.